Hello everyone and welcome back to a new episode of a new short series that was voted for by our patrons and YouTube members. They asked for how are we going to create a character selection screen like the ones you see in Super Smash Bros and or Street Fighter. In this episode we're going to go through the process of creating a UI for our screen, setting up the different characters and their portraits for us to click on. So join us right now as we get started. So to get started, I prepped by bringing in some Infinity Blade assets. We've got this ice environment and I've also got all the characters from the warrior pack. Now what I've also done in here is I've selected all my characters in here and I've changed their skeleton to match the mannequin skeleton that comes with the templates. So I've gone to skeleton and assigned skeleton and chosen the skeleton over here. I've already done this, so I'm going to just get past all this. So you just choose the skeleton from the list and assign it. But now that means that these all now have animations based on the third person idle jump, so on and so forth. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a photo studio to take pictures for our character's thumbnail. So we're going to right click here and create a new blueprint class, which is actor, and we'll call this one the photo studio. And inside here, we're going to have the skeletal mesh. And we'll just put that in with uh, Barbarous here. We can see him in all his glory. Next, attached to him, we want this spring arm. And attached to that spring arm, we want a camera. Now, you just want to rotate the spring arm around to face the front of the character, and particularly the head. And we'll bring it up there. It's a bit too far away, so let's bring it in a little bit. I'm going to take change the target arm length here to 120. We'll see how this treats us in a moment. Okay, next thing we'll do is make it so that skeletal mesh is only rendered in the custom depth channel. So click on the skeletal mesh, go to details on the right, and search for custom, and you'll see custom depth render pass only. Render custom depth passed. Click that, and now he'll render in a custom depth pass. On his own. So if I bring in now the photo studio, we can see it there, and you can see if the camera there is lined up just fine for us. Maybe a bit too far away, bring it in a bit closer, and obviously we assign a skeleton animation to this. So we go to skeletal mesh and give that the animation up here, change that to your animation asset, and we're just going to choose the idle. And then on the spring arm, I'll bring it in a bit closer, we'll change that to like 90. Hit compile and save there. Now I want to pilot this thing, so if I right click on the photo studio in my outliner and go pilot, I now can see camera. And I want to take the picture like this, so let's go ahead and take the picture. Now before we actually push the button, what we want to do maybe is change some lighting effect on our character. So light them as you would a real, a real photography studio. So let's come out of there and let's add some lighting to our photo studio. Add a spotlight. Okay, and we're going to just add that to the attach it to the root here. And I'm just going to put that into position to light my character here as much as I can. And we're going to change the um, settings over here. For their angles, there it is. Get down a bit. Let's see. Okay, you can see him coming through here now. Oh, I forget to pilot the video, uh, pilot the camera studio. And there we have it. And I'm going to go to screenshot size multiplier, turn this up to like four. Be aware if you turn this up too high, it will slow down your computer. So just be heads up with that. Then you want to tick use custom depth as mask. Now in here, because our character is set to use custom depth, we can see him now cut out from the rest of our image. So if I now hit the take picture button, we'll take a screenshot and put it in the folder like so. I've now got one image. Let's change it around to do another character. So I'm going to click on Photo Studio here. Go down to skeletal mesh and I'm going to change the character here to something else. 
So here's forge. I'm going to hit picture again. And now I've got two images. I've got one there, one there. And so on and so forth. We'll do this for a couple more characters uh, whilst we're here and then do the rest off stream. So go on here, cross giant, take picture. And take it. Do one more. Uh, we'll do Robo. Okay, so there are my six characters, the thumbnails ready to go. So all we need to do is bring those now into Unreal. So let's create a new folder for our UI. And we're going to go and create another folder in here for our textures. And in here, we're going to import those images. So drag them down. So and they should all come in nice and easily. Okay, so next thing we need to do is set up the actual UI button that's going to hold our and frame our characters. Now for this, you can get hold of any sort of texture you want to frame them. You can even make it from scratch if you want, um, or you can bring in a texture, totally up to you how you want to accomplish this. But I'm just going to go and create a new widget blueprint, and this would be a character slot. In our widget, we're going to get rid of the canvas panel. Don't want that. And in its place, we're going to have a button instead. This button is going to be the thing the player clicks on to select their character. So with the button, we're going to change that from fill screen up top here to the desired on screen. So we can see what it's going to look like when we put it in the game. And inside there, we're going to put in a size box. And for this size box, we're going to set the value here to width and height of ride of 128 each. Okay. Inside this size box, I'm going to put a scale box in. Now, the reason why we're using a scale box is because the aspect resolution of our characters' pictures aren't square, but textures like these are. So we are getting around that by using a scale box to bring that in. So on the scale box, we're going to um, change the setting over here to stretch and we're going to change the scale to fit Y. That means it will scale it up until the Y has been fit onto the whole entire screen. Next, we need to put in a image inside of here. So let's drag in our image inside our scale box. Let's just pick one of the ones we made. We have the brush, texture, and high resolution screenshot by default. So we'll pick that. And there you go, you can see your character there in the thumbnail. And you can mess about now with the background of the colors and, and so forth. So I'm going to go to my button here and I'm going to change the background color to be darker. Stand out a little bit better. Okay. Compile and save that. Okay, so now let's bring this onto the actual screen to film the whole grid. So let's close this and create a new widget blueprint and that'll be character select screen and in here we're going to have a couple of areas so we're going to have uh, in the middle the grid of all the characters that can be selected and on the left and the right bit, uh, either side of this grid are going to be the character selection uh, indicators so it'd be like a a cardboard cutout almost of an animated character with their name and stats and so forth beneath them. So our grid here is going to be a um, order first. I put that in there. In this border here, we're going to put it in middle, roughly at the bottom. So I'm going to change the anchor here to bottom middle, and we're going to change the alignment in X to 0 0.5 and Y into 1. Change the position now to zero zero, and it should bring us now down to the bottom. So all I have to do is change the size to reflect what we want. So we're going to go over here and change that to maybe five hundred for now, and this one will change to four hundred for now. Okay. Now this isn't uh, for uh, for good. We are going to be changing this throughout, so don't worry about that too much. You can put whatever you want in the background of this. So inside that border, we're going to have a grid. And we're in particular going to be using the uniform grid panel because we want all of them to be the same shape and size 
as each other. Learn our unit from grid here, we're going to put in each of our character slots. So let's search for a character slot now in our user defined widgets. You see character slot. Drag one into the uniform grid panel, and there it is. Let's add another one. And move it along with these arrows, and you can set them all up. So I've got six characters, so I'm just going to put them all in like this. Okay. Now we can tidy up the uniform grid a bit. Now the moment it's stretching the grid across the whole entire thing, which isn't necessary. What we can do is just go to the center alignment for both of these to bring them in. If you wanted to increase padding between these, then what you can do is just edit the original of this character slot. So next we're going to do is compile this and we're going to create a data table for our characters. So let's go into our data struct. And we'll call this one character struct. And in here we're going to have three things. We're going to have the character's name. That's going to be a name variable or text rather. Uh, then we're going to have the uh, image, so that'll be a thumbnail. That'll be a texture 2D. And finally, we're going to say to it what the mesh is going to be as well. We'll say skeletal mesh. And we need this because we need to be able to change one of the meshes later on. Let's go to mesh, it is there. Okay, we're then going to create a data table for our characters here. So let's create a data table from miscellaneous and choose our character struct from the list. Click character data. And here you can set up each of your characters. So it helps you able to see both what you're doing here and what you're doing on the data table. So we're going to go through each of our things in order and add each one. So this first one was barbarous. Okay. So we're going to go to character data, make a new one, row name, barbarous. And put the name in. And the thumbnail will be um, the first screenshot. Okay, let's add a couple more. Um, our next one is Forge, I think. Yep, go in here. Forge. And so on and so forth. Okay, we're going to save that for now, but we'll see you carry on going and filling all the characters that you have. Once you've got all that, you can go back to your select screen here, and we're going to assign these uh, slots here with a character name. So we're going to go open up the individual slot UI. Here it is. And then go to the graph. And we have a variable on here for the data. And the type of this would be a data table row handle. The way these work is that you get to choose what table you're reading from and what row from a drop down, which makes it really easy to set stuff up. So with this data here, we want to change the image first and foremost. So let's take the data out and to get that. And then from there, we're going to break and get hold of the data table and row name. And you just do get data table row plug that in and choose the direct data table. Okay. Now we've got this, we've got this out row here that we can break out and get the information we want. So here I'm going to come out and do break character struct. And now we have access to the thumbnail of each character. So I'm going to go drag, uh, drag in my image 113, which is my thumbnail and do set brush from Texture. Plug that into row found and then plug the thumbnail into texture. Hit compile and that's it. 
So that's the character slot. We're going to go over to the character select screen. And for each one of these, I should be able to choose what one they are following. Uh, if it doesn't appear, like I don't think it's appearing now, all you have to do is replace these with the character slot again. So I'm going to select all these and put in the character slot again. And we should be able to. Oh, apologies. I think I forgot to actually tick the thing. Yep, I did. This data here, you want to make sure you tick it editable and exposed on spawn. There it is. Okay, so you can choose what data table and what one on here. So that's out of three, it'd be this one. And then going to duplicate that, move it along, and we're going to change that to forge. And we should see, yes, the image changed to a new character. So that's great. We do one more. And we're going to choose Frost Giant and hit save. Just let's fix this background a bit. So I'm going to make this a black color. Get a see through 0.7. And hit OK. Now I can change the size of this as I see fit. And also the positioning. So I'm going to go to positioning here and do minus 200. And there we have it, the end of part one. In the next episode, we're going to carry on and make our characters select and show the icons of the characters in their full view on the screen, along with their name and animations. So join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can catch all those videos before everyone else from just $1 a month. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons and YouTube members for voting for this series and for their continued support. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Five one.